Let me guess, you got your MIDI track loaded, you just laid down something nice, you pressed play, and what? Nothing, right? Crickets? Absolutely nothing? Let's fix that right now. Real quick before we dive into this, I just want to remind you that I have my 7 steps to a pro level mix PDF guide in the description below. Let's dive right in. Alright, to start identifying the problem, we need to discuss one quick thing, and that is that MIDI is not sound. MIDI is data. Okay, MIDI is telling your virtual instrument or your hardware that a note is being played in that virtual instrument or the hardware itself. Okay, so this leads us to common mistake number one. And that is assuming that when you have a MIDI track, audio will magically play. So what we need to do is first make sure that we have a virtual instrument loaded into our effects or in other DAWs into our inserts on our virtual instrument track. And then you create a MIDI item. I'm assuming you already know how to do that. If you need to know how to do that, go to MIDI Editor Basics, check out that video, and then we can start testing out different solutions. So if I press play right now on this track, there's no effects loaded, no virtual instruments. Exactly what we expected. You saw on the metering that the triggers are occurring, but you heard nothing. There's no audio tied to it. So the first thing you want to do is go into inserts or effects, and then you want to pull up one of your virtual instruments. I'm going to go with this Labs by Spitfire Audio. Okay, and let's test it out. Let's click the keys. All right, we're getting audio from the virtual instrument. So then if we go and press play with the MIDI data here, it should play the track and the audio. Now one thing I want to emphasize is not all virtual instruments will load automatically with a preset or a pack. It might be in its initialization state. And in that case, you have to go into the instrument itself and select a preset or a patch. OK, so I have a very cool and very old school synthesizer, Synth 1. And it has initial sound, sound big, zero. Sometimes this will play just some kind of saw wave. Other times, you have to go in and select where the samples are or the patches. And then you have to open one up. And if I start playing, you should be able to hear the sound. Okay, so two very simple but very common reasons why people don't hear the audio with their MIDI tracks. Okay, and we're going to progress a little bit more. So we're going to start out simple and then we're going to get to more technical stuff. Now let's assume that you have multiple tracks that you're working with. Okay, and these could be any types of tracks. But for example purposes, you have to pay attention to what's being soloed and muted. So your MIDI track could be muted. In other words, it's not going to play and not not all DAWs show you this grayed out situation when you mute the track. So you have to pay attention, is the track muted? Okay, that's very simple, but it happens all the time. Then another thing is, another track might be soloed. So if another track is soloed, your MIDI data is not going to play out of the track that you're working on. It doesn't matter if it's the track that you had selected. It doesn't matter if it's the track you just recorded on. If another track is soloed, you're not going to hear it. And it's even more important that if you have a group of tracks, right, and you accidentally soloed one of those, or even on purpose, you might not even see it if the group is hidden. This is where things get confusing. Even if it's in its simplest terms of, oh, I just soloed another track, obviously, you can't even see it on the screen because you hid the individual tracks under the group. Okay, so this is why I emphasize going to the mix window or showing all tracks and then making sure nothing else is soloed. And then to emphasize even further, your volume might just be way too low. So in a lot of DAWs, you can see the master fader in this arrange view or this track view. Okay, and you can right click or in other cases, you would do something like view master fader or, or insert master track, something like that. So here it's show master track. And then here, you might have accidentally set this down. Okay, so getting a little more technical. Now, if you have your instrument track loaded, and you have something playing audio on that track, a virtual instrument, none of the other tracks are soloed, your track isn't muted, then this could just be a simple routing issue for you to hear it back in your headphones. And the first thing you want to look at is the audio coming out of the meters, both on your individual track, as well as the master track or the master fader. And if that's the case, then you know that the issue has something to do with the software registering that back through your audio interface or your computer into your headphones. I just want to show what you should be looking at in the meters. Okay, you see the metering on both the individual track and the master track. Now to check routing, you can do a number of things. You can see the routing in the track control panel or in the track itself for a lot of DAWs. 
right? So if you click on that, it starts showing you. And basically, this track is going to the master track, okay? The master channel. Now, if I didn't have that selected, or in other cases, in other DAWs, you don't have a routing from your individual track to your master track, which is the audio out one, two tracks, which are essentially the tracks that go out to the two audio channels that you hear in your headphones, then you're not gonna hear anything. Oftentimes, your tracks will get sent to the master track automatically. Where this becomes an issue is when you're using things like sends and aux tracks and effects tracks. So you're routing your tracks, and maybe incorrectly, routing your tracks to other tracks, like an aux track, and then you're either turning off the audio signal from the original track, or if it's something like a group, you might have routed it to the group, but the group might not be routed to the master track. So routing is an in-depth topic, but I urge you to look up your DAW's routing capabilities and just be sure that your tracks are going to the right place. Okay, now here's a fun one. If you're using a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI device, which a lot of people are, you need to make sure that that input is connected and that input is selected on the track. So you created your MIDI track or your virtual instrument track, and then you go to the inputs, all right, and then here I have input MIDI and I have all channels. If you don't see your virtual instrument or your hardware, your, your pads or whatever it is that you're playing through here, then you need to make sure that that's set up first and foremost before you can actually apply it to the track. So to do that, you go into your DAW's settings or preferences. When you're in the settings or preferences, there's typically a place to go for MIDI inputs or MIDI devices. Always make sure your MIDI devices are on before you open your DAW. There are ways around it. If you accidentally open your DAW before turning the MIDI device on, go ahead and turn it on. And then you can go and click something like Reset All MIDI Devices or in other DAWs, Initialize MIDI Devices. This button will search for any drivers of any devices that are connected to your computer and then they'll pull in that information. Once your device is actually connected and your DAW can see the device, then you can go ahead and load it as an input on your track. Okay, and you can go ahead and select your actual device and select a particular channel. Oftentimes I'm only working with one MIDI device at a time, so I can do basically all channels. And even further, because I'm only using the one device, I could do all MIDI inputs, all channels. Okay, so once you have your track set up, you have your instrument loaded, you made sure that your device is connected, and you made sure that your input is selected for your MIDI device, you are good to go. Now a couple bonus tips, when something is working, make a track preset. Go ahead and save that track as a preset with your virtual instrument on it, with your MIDI notes on it saved ready to go, because the next time you run into this issue, and there will most likely be a next time, that will save you tons of time in diagnosing the problem. And one other thing I wanna point out is if you go into your MIDI item, there's also velocity. If you inadvertently set the velocity, to zero or basically something inaudible, then you also wouldn't hear the MIDI. If none of these tips help, then there's always the tried and true restart your DAW, restart your computer. Oftentimes issues with your audio MIDI setup or drivers or something like that will get resolved when you do some type of restart. And on top of that, make sure your drivers and plugins are up to date. So if you're using an outdated plugin or you haven't updated the drivers of your hardware, like your MIDI device, then it's always a good idea to do so. And in an absolutely worst case scenario, try reinstalling the plugins that you're trying to use if the plugins themselves seem to be the problem. And I have a video on that as well. All right, in the comments below, let me know which DAW you use and whether or not this video helped you and what the problem was. And once you're all set up and ready to go, be sure to check out this video to make sure that you check out some awesome VST instruments many of which are absolutely free. And also, double check in the description below and be sure to get that 7 Steps to a Pro Level Mix. Thanks again for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I'll see you in the next video.